Good day, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on Network Hardening Techniques, Part 2. Today we're going to talk about encryption basics, and then we're going to talk about wireless network hardening, and then I'm going to conclude with a brief discussion on security policies. With that, let's go ahead and begin this session. I'm going to begin by talking about encryption basics. Encryption is the process of taking a message and scrambling the data so that it can't be read if it gets intercepted. Encryption relies upon the fact that the receiver of the scrambled data has the proper key that allows it to unscramble the data and put the message back together. The strength of the encryption is usually determined by the strength of the key. The strength of the key is measured in the number of bits that it takes to generate the key. The more bits that it takes, the stronger the key is. There are two basic types of encryption. There's symmetrical encryption, in which both ends of the communication channel use the same key to encrypt and decrypt the message. Pre-shared key, or PSK, is symmetrical in nature. Then there's asymmetrical encryption in which two different security keys are used in an arrangement called PKI, or Public Key Infrastructure. The private key encrypts the message and the public key decrypts the message. On the return side, the original receiver encrypts with the original sender's public key, which then gets decrypted with the private key. In this arrangement, the private key cannot decrypt what it encrypted, and the public key cannot decrypt what it encrypted. So it only works if there are two separate keys. So let's talk about those asymmetrical encryption keys. There are two main types of asymmetrical encryption keys. There is the EAP TLS type key, that's Extensible Authentication Protocol Transport Layer Security, type of key. It requires the use of a certificate authority, or CA, that is trusted by both parties. The CA provides the certificates to both parties that allow for the generation of both the public and private security keys. It's very secure, but it is also difficult to manage and maintain. Then there's TTLS, Tunneling Transport Layer Security. It's as secure as the EAP TLS, but only the authentication server receives a certificate for the key generation process, and it's easier to manage and maintain than EAP TLS. With that covered, let's move on to wireless network hardening. Wireless networks can represent a special challenge in the network hardening process. The goal of most hardening techniques is to keep nefarious elements from ever seeing the network traffic. But with wireless networks, that is all but impossible as traffic is broadcast over known radio frequency channels. This traffic is subject to capture and the transmissions inform any who care that an active wireless network is present. There are steps that can be taken, as in encrypting the traffic, to make sure that even if the network traffic is captured, it cannot be read. This helps to keep the network traffic safe and the network from being breached. One of the first techniques that you can use to harden a wireless network is MAC address filtering. MAC address filtering can be used to limit which devices can connect to the wireless network. If an unknown MAC address attempts to connect to the network, it is ignored by the wireless access point. So when it requests to join, the WAP checks its MAC filter, and if that MAC isn't in the filter, it just drops that requester. While MAC filtering can be effective, it can also be difficult to manage, and it is also possible to spoof MAC addresses. Which brings us to basic authentication and encryption for wireless networks. First up is WEP, or Wired Equivalent Privacy. It's an encryption standard that uses either a 40-bit or 128-bit encryption key in the RC4 algorithm to authenticate devices and encrypt transmissions. 
it uses a pre-shared key as a password or passphrase to authenticate users. WEP is easily cracked and should not be used. As a matter of fact, WEP can be cracked in minutes. Better than WEP is WPA, Wi-Fi Protected Access. It's an authentication and encryption standard that improved upon WEP, but still uses PSK and the RC4 algorithm. But to increase security, it also introduced Temporal Key Integrity Protocol, or TKIP. TKIP generates a new security key for every packet, and that new security key has a strength of 128 bits or greater. Now, it's not as easily cracked as WEP, but it can still be cracked and should not be used unless absolutely necessary. And hopefully that's not the case in your wireless network. Better than WPA is WPA2 Personal, Wi-Fi Protected Access to Personal. It's an authentication and encryption standard that improved upon WPA. It does not rely upon the weak RC4 encryption algorithm but it does use AES as its algorithm. That's Advanced Encryption Standard. It can also use the PSK method, but this is not required as WPA2 Personal can also dynamically assign security keys. While it's theoretically possible to crack WPA2 Personal, it would be extremely difficult to do so so this should be the minimum level of security on any wireless network. Better yet, if possible, deploy WPA2 Enterprise. Now this forms a portion of the 802.1x standard. It is used to authenticate users on a wireless network and uses one of the forms of the extensible authentication protocol in setting up the encryption. A central authentication server is required for 802.1x or WPA2 Enterprise, which does allow for greater control over the authentication process. As a side note, EAP is actually a set of definitions for how security keys will be exchanged in order for encryption to take place. It's time to conclude with a brief discussion on security policies. While security policies are only written documents, they can actually do quite a bit to harden a network against a breach. Security policies document or outline what is allowed or not allowed to occur on the network from a security point of view. They are usually crafted at the upper layer of management with the help of knowledgeable IT personnel. They establish the expected behavior which can go a long ways towards hardening your network. Security policies give administrators the authority to put into place measures to protect the security of the network. In many cases, they also give administrators the authority to enforce the policies that lead to a hardened network. Well, that concludes this session on Network Hardening Techniques Part 2. I began by talking about encryption basics, then we moved on to wireless network hardening, and we concluded with a brief discussion on security policies. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I hope to do another one soon.